It is my pleasure to introduce today's program, Improving Collaboration and Connecting Users with Office 365. And now it is over to you, Richard, to get us started. Perfect. So hello, everyone. My name is Richard Harbridge. Um, I'm a partner technology strategist with Microsoft. And uh, we'll move on to the next slide, and I'll just give you a quick high-level overview. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of really exciting things today around Office 365 and what Office 365 is. Um, what I wanted to make sure you're all aware of is that um, Office 365 is really important to Microsoft, and so there's a lot of really brilliant people at Microsoft, as well as uh, great experts like Talon uh, in the field that help customers um, make sense of Office 365. If you have any questions, um, I'm very, very friendly, uh, and you can reach out to me uh, by email. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. That's why I have a lot of connections on LinkedIn. People bother me all the time. Um, so feel free to reach out to me if you have questions, you need help, and uh, I'll work with you and uh, other people at Microsoft to make sure you get the, the, you know, the help that you need and help understand uh, what Office 365 is capable of. With that, why don't we jump into the actual uh, front of the message. So. Let's let's talk about high-level Office 365. So on slide three, we're really uh, talking about the challenges that businesses run into. So in today's world, there's a bunch of different factors that are impacting businesses. You know, when we think of our access without a VPN, right, which is, I think, what we're really saying when we say people need to access sites and resources remotely, um, without VPN, you know, frictionless, uh, access, um, so making access, you know, more uh, available in more places uh, across a multitude of devices, and being able to um, work in today's modern world, right? Because today, you know, we're always on, we're always expected to be able to be effective, and we also have uh, workforces that tend to be more distributed. Even within a business, um, you know, you may see how where people are actually working um, with one another uh, in in close-knit groups, um, but they'll do it, you know, via uh, online web conferencing tools or, you know, through, uh, you know, SharePoint, IM tools, those types of things, things that are built into Office 365. Um, we also have this challenge of uh, the time and energy it takes to not just manage, because when we say managing IT infrastructure, it, you know, it suggests that um, we spend a ton of time just keeping the lights on. And yes, availability and uh, keeping these resources on is, is important, but it's also the upgrade hassle, right? So, um, you know, when you when you look at your own infrastructure, whether that's um, the productivity infrastructure of uh, Office um, and saying, that, hey, what version of Office are we on? What version of SharePoint are we on? What version of Link? Uh, what version of Exchange? You know, when you look at all the different technologies um, we're going to be talking about today, when we look at our IT infrastructure, it's not just that, you know, can we offset the management moving uh, some of that workload to the cloud, but, you know, it's also really important to rationalize, you know, how far behind are we, right? If we were if we were really modern, if we were using the latest technology, um, what kind of an impact would that have on our business? And what difference would that make from an IT perspective where IT is um, always being able to deliver innovative services um, to the business? And we'll give an example or two of those in the session today, but just really want to reframe it. Instead of just thinking about the... IT offset, which is really important. Think about that, um, you know, being modern uh, as well and being able to focus your time and energy towards the things that really matter. And then, of course, um, the versioning of software is, is a key part of that. Uh, in the next slide, we actually highlight how we do that with Office 365. So we want to be pr more productive everywhere. Um, so I want to talk about this for a moment um, from a data perspective. Uh, for those who uh, are kind of on top of things, you may have noticed that Forrester uh, has released a, a total economic impact uh, summary for Office 365. They did this a few years ago for SharePoint. They've done a new one for Office 365. And I just want to share with you two quotes from that. The first one is, um, for being productive anywhere, our employees can now get their data and apps from anywhere without having to mess with VPNs. Office 365 is really intuitive and simple to use. So that's a quote from a customer. And this is important because making making it not just easy to use, but making it intuitive and being able to work from anywhere is a really critical uh, need for businesses today. So that's something to consider for Office 365. Another one is that um, the savings here, because a lot of people think, you know, in, granted, the savings are drastic on the IT infrastructure and, you know, the, the element of, 
uh, operational management. But there's also a lot of cost savings uh, from mobility. A lot of times um, people open remote offices um, for resources, you know, for employees to be able to work effectively. But what if you could save, you know, two to three million per year in office costs, right, by not having to open up these remote offices? And that's something that some of our customers have done. So think about the, the impact of being able to say, look, we can transition um, not just into the cloud from a uh, technology perspective, but we can also potentially offset some of those um, brick and mortar uh, investments that we normally have to do. Another thing to consider here uh, when we say work better together is that working better together doesn't mean working the same way we have been. So if you think of the way uh, we work with technology today, um, if I'm working in an office document, uh, being able to co-edit and work on that document together with someone, regardless of where they're located, and regardless of whether, and this is important, they have Office installed, right? So saying, again, remove some of that friction, make it so I can edit with other people quickly, rapidly, and potentially on uh, multiple devices with or without Office installed on them. Um, another big piece of that, working better together, is how we work. So enterprise social is having an impact in a lot of organizations. It's you know benefiting uh, organizations by driving better communications. It's eliminating redundant social tools because um, social and what we call Yammer is built into Office 365. Um, and it's integrated. So we have inline social, we have other things, and we'll show you a little bit of that today. So you know really taking social, which is something that you know is still relatively uh, new um, to the enterprise ecosystem and saying hey we're not just going to use social and provide people ways of working better together but we're going to do that in a way that's integrated in a way that's um, consistent in our experiences and I think that's a really big uh, point that we want to make with Office 365 and of course uh, video and other things there's other ways people collaborate um, and you'll see some examples of that today as well so really really powerful working better together um, if we move on to the simplify but stay in control we also have a ton of compliance capabilities um, so if we think of the big benefit here is the labor you know, labor hour savings that you're going to get. A lot of times, uh, IT organizations, they run a lot of additional projects, right? So we, we implement these redundant solutions at times. Um, and it's not redundant now, but it will be when you move to Office 365, because we've built so much control and compliance capabilities into the platform that it really helps you reduce needs around e-discovery uh, costs. It might reduce uh, needs around uh, data loss protection and data breaches and all these other things, because it's a very secure platform, and we have a lot of compliance and controls built in. Um, so that you know, high high grade enterprise security and control is is core to uh, Microsoft's cloud offerings, and Office 365 is absolutely no exception to that. Um, and it's worth noting that there are some substantial cost savings that can come with that. Um, and the last one, which is the the most significant, is you know getting more out of your investment. And you think about the you know, first cost that's easy to measure is implementation cost. So how much does it cost to implement, you know, these technologies on-prem? It's quite a, quite expensive. Um, and you can offset a lot of those implementation costs. The other consideration here is the server, hardware, hosting, um, you know, the, the typical costs that you'd see from an infrastructure perspective. Um, and so you can offset a lot of that. There's also some significant licensing uh, savings that you get from moving to a subscription-based model. So you're not paying that upfront cost right away. Um, and even uh, or many organizations Organizations have cited uh, IT support costs, um, and these can be quite significant, um, you know, in the millions uh, from a cost savings perspective. And the reason um, support becomes less costly is because the tools that we're providing have a lot of built-in um, guidance, a lot of help, and they also have a lot of intuitive controls, right? It makes sense if you're on a more modern uh, platform, typically it's designed in a way that's a little bit closer to maybe what a consumer might use, and so it becomes easier. And this is very true and evident by the direction we're going with, uh, as an example, a link uh, is going to be called Skype for Business uh, moving forward. And so when we think of Skype for Business in, in our next calendar year and how that impacts that, you know, most uh, people in the world have used Skype uh, and are pretty familiar with the experiences and interfaces for Skype. And so being able to translate that quickly to the business uh, is also critical. So really, really powerful. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to pass it on to Dan, who's going to actually take us through some of these experiences and how these work. Um, and uh, I'm really excited. Thank you, Richard, and I will follow you up here by jumping into to what 
what Office 365 really is, and it's your complete uh, Office solution in the cloud. And you have a lot of people, when they think about Office 365, they think about the Office suite that is Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Exchange. It's, it's all of that. It's desktop apps, mobile apps, as well as web apps. There's um, inside of the new Office 365, you're able to pull up Word documents and all, all the such online in a web browser and be able to do editing there. And I'll go through with a small demonstration later of how you can collaborate on co-authoring documents where you can have two people in the same document at the same time editing it at the same time and making sure that everything is all saved and, and you're not overriding each other's changes. And just recently we were at a client site and they thought that it was it was pretty pretty neat of doing the co-authoring where there were two of us working on an architecture document at the same time and you realize that you can get those documents and get things done a lot quicker because you don't have to wait for one person to finish making all their edits then you go in and make your edits and you can both edit at the same time. So the other thing that your complete office in the cloud is, is you have business class email with Exchange, you have file sharing with SharePoint Online, you have HD video conferencing with Link technical support, a financially backed SLA. The um, simplified IT management is one of the things with Office 365 now is you don't have to do an, uh, an install for Exchange, you don't have to do an install for Link for um, SharePoint, if you've ever done any of those installs, you probably never want to do one again. But with um, with Office 365 in the cloud, that's all, all done for you. It's a great software as a service. And the last part of it is you have access anywhere that you have access to a web browser. So that's very important now. The people on their phones, people on tablets, in Starbucks, you can access Office 365 whenever, wherever. So just to jump in a little bit about Talon and what we are, we're a national uh, solution provider for Microsoft. We have offices in Hartford, New York, Boston, Tampa, and Washington, D.C. Um, we have five gold competencies as a Microsoft partner and two silver competencies. And some of the our client list of, that we've done some of these uh, collaboration projects for um, range anywhere from government to financial, to retail, it's it's all across the board of people starting to see the advantage of using Office 365 for not only an upgrade to Office, but to start to do this real collaboration and get a lot of work out of people. And as Richard said before, when people are working in remote places, a lot of a lot of times now, I, I live and work out of Florida. A lot of the work that I do is in the Northeast. I use Link morning, noon, and night with a lot of the people on my team. You can easily do uh, screen sharing, video sharing, chat. It's just the, the end-all, be-all tool for me now, and I'm not sure what I would do without it. I am the cloud practice director here at Talon, so I, I manage everything that has to do with Office 365, Azure, do a lot of stuff with application development in ALM. Now to get back into the Office 365 service highlights, there's four main parts to what, what Microsoft is calling workloads. And the first workload that I would like to go into is the Office 365 Pro Plus. And this is when you, if depending on the license that you get for Office 365, the, the most common seems to be the E1 or the E3. With the E3, you get all of all of it that's mentioned on this page, and you have Office Pro Plus, which includes five copies of Microsoft Office that you can install on any device anywhere. I know myself, I have it on my laptop that I use every day. I have it on my Surface that I that I use a lot when I do presentations. They also have Office for the Mac. So people that have iPads or Macs, you can put it on uh, the Mac. You can have Office on your phone. And one of this is a huge draw of why, one of the reasons why people are going to Office 365 is because there's such a mobile workforce and you're using different 
different PCs or different um, different devices every day. You can bring your own device, and you have five copies of Office to install on there. The next part is Exchange. They, with Exchange, you you have the benefit of software as a service, and a lot of people say they that they're not quite sure if they want their email in the cloud and they don't want it as software as a service, but anybody that uses Outlook.com or Hotmail or Gmail or Yahoo Mail, it's it's been software as a service for years, and that's that's just how everything is going now. With Exchange, you can with Exchange in the cloud, you can also do hybrid integrations where you have some mailboxes on prem and some mailboxes in the cloud. A lot of our clients will do this as a trial to do, say, a, a proof of concept, make sure that everything is working, have about 200 users in the cloud, and then slowly migrate everybody everybody to the cloud over a certain period of time, and then shut off their whole Exchange infrastructure in-house. Other clients that we've worked with tend to go with the, or not tend to go, they will go with the hybrid situation for the long term because they want certain mailboxes, they don't want those mailboxes out in the cloud. There's one client that we work with that they have some government regulations and, and even though Office 365 complies with the government regulations, they still want those mailboxes and email addresses kept on-prem. So they have probably about four to 500 email boxes in the cloud and about 20 of them still sitting on-prem and that's their their long-term solution is to run a hybrid and with exchange and with office 365 you can have a it's just like outlook you can have voicemails in your mailbox all of this you can hook up to your active directory and have it do single sign-on through your active directory so Right out of the right out of the gate, you have Exchange and Office. The next part is SharePoint. And SharePoint Online is kind of two things. It's OneDrive for Business, which gives you unlimited personal storage, and it also has Team Sites and Yammer integration. The one advantage that a lot of people are doing with the SharePoint Online is a lot of a lot of uh, clients don't want to manage a whole SharePoint infrastructure. It's usually a lot of servers and a lot of machines and a lot of hardware and they just they just don't want to do it. So they've been moving to SharePoint Online. And then the last part that we have is Link. And everybody talks about Link and they say, oh yeah, it's it's IM. But the way that I always explain it is it's IM kind of on steroids because yes you can chat with people. You can also do desktop sharing you can do video sharing you can do you can I mean at the click of a button do all of that so in with as Richard was saying is as it goes to Skype everything is going to be a, a more integrated um, environment for the business one of the things about collaboration is everybody always wants to be be more productive anywhere and everywhere and one of the things that Office 365 will lets, lets you do is it lets you have Office anywhere. As I said before, it has Office on five devices. You can use it on Macs, PCs, tablets, smartphones. And Microsoft has, has gone away from the old way of thinking a long time ago that, you know, it's a Mac, it's bad, or it's, um, it's Android and it's bad. Now they've realized that everybody has all of these other devices and if you can't beat them, then I guess that we're going to give you something that looks just like what we have on Windows on your other devices. So they've worked really hard to get Office integrated with the Mac and with a with the Android devices and smartphones. And a lot of the way that all of these things work is they're optimized for the device that they're on. So for the most part, I, I won't say it's 100% perfect, but for for usually what you need to do if you're looking at a document on a tablet or you're looking at it on a smartphone it looks pretty much the same and, and things don't really get shifted around all that much like I said if you're gonna if you're gonna do editing of a of a huge proposal that's going out that is a hundred pages long you probably don't want to do it on your smartphone but if you need to do a quick review of somebody's work the smartphone app for offices is more than enough 
And as I said before, it's the experience is optimized for all devices. So whether whether you're on a phone, you can see with the with the screenshots as they have here that everything does get moved around and it doesn't really get chopped off. It doesn't hurt what you're trying to display, and you can actually use it in a way that is more uh, more functional than trying to open up your laptop in the middle of a la in the middle of an airport. If you're about to board a plane, you could look on your smartphone or you could look on your tablet and be able to make some quick edits to a document and, and move on from there. And this is, uh, I'm just going to throw two points in here. It's an important difference uh, in that each of these um, code bases that we're developing, they're developed specifically for the device. So it's one thing to say, hey, we support touch across uh, the office experiences and office experiences, but it's built in. Um, it's another thing to say, these devices are changing all the time, right? There's new devices, um, you know, uh, Google has, uh, you know, tablets have really gone on the rise. Um, Apple iPads uh, have had various size changes, right? And, uh, now that we have the smaller sizes and everything else. So that what's important to note is when we build and we optimize um, for the devices, we're building that into the platform and doing those updates for you without you having to rework or rebuild stuff. So being able to keep pace um, with device change and device proliferation is also um, something worth noting here um, for sure. So and and as we as I said before, is they now have Office for the Mac, so that anything anything you can see on Windows, you can now see in a Mac and do all of your your editing that way. The next thing that I want to touch on here is the OneDrive for Business, and I mentioned it before that it's it's um, unlimited storage for for you to store all of your documents anything of such and this is one thing that I have to say over the last year and a half I I used all the time now working on different devices you can have OneDrive for business on your in your Office 365 account if you save all of your documents out to OneDrive for business in the cloud as you go to these different devices you can work on those documents on those different devices you don't have to worry about did I email it to myself did I did I save it out to a share file on my network drive? And what happens if I'm not in the office and I need to get a, get a hold of that network drive? This is a, a network drive in the cloud. So as you move from device to device, you can have OneDrive for business and access it through the, through the web. Or there's different plugins that you, or different things that you can download so that you can operate OneDrive for business through File Explorer and, and be able to sync things to the hard drive on these different devices, and it keeps getting synced back and forth between those hard drives and the in the OneDrive for Business and Office 365. One of the other things with OneDrive for Business that I'll show you in a little bit in a in a short demo is being able to collaborate on Office documents real time. Is being able to open up documents and actually start editing it and see if somebody else is editing it you can see what they're typing right away and it's something that you might you used to have to either get on the phone or sometimes you'd see yourself in a in a chat session of or on the phone and you're cutting and pasting things back and forth and the one person is editing in the document you can do it now co-collaboration at, at real time One of the, the good things about Office 365 is you can get everything that you need in a browser. You can see your Outlook, you can see Calendar, Peoples and President, um, Presence, Instant Messaging, Sites. The, and as you start to see the newer versions of Office 365, the web version is looking more and more like your Outlook desktop version every day. And I, I think that it's just a matter of time until there's no more desktop versions of anything and everything will be, be done through Outlook. With the innovations of the websites and web programming, they were able to do a lot of things that they were never, did, never able to do before on the web and they were only able to do on desktop apps. But as I go through the the demonstration a little bit, you'll be able to see how similar it looks to the desktop applications.
As Richard mentioned before, one of the things that you always want to do is you want to be able to work better together, whether it be having a mobile workforce where we have offices in a bunch of different cities and we're constantly working together to to try and make a seem like a seamless um, a seamless company. One of the things Office 365 will let you do is it'll let you work better together enable everybody to work on things at the same time with the collaboration tools. You can meet whenever, wherever. The One of the things that's great about Link is you can start a meeting with a click of a button. Once you've started a meeting and you say that, oh, I need to include Richard in there, with another click of a button for this icon, you can include in more people, you can you can kick people out. You can pretty much do whatever you want and able to, to get the people that you need. You can see their presence through your IM window as you would today. And if they're available, you can get them a touch of a button. Sometimes that's good. Sometimes it's bad. But it's something that will always uh, help the collaboration process. One of the other things that you can do, is, as we're doing today, is this whole presentation is being done through Link. So we have just what we have here is some of the content. We have it uploaded to the Link meeting, and we're presenting it through Link. And I'll, I'll just I'll ta toss on two things here that are really interesting. One, uh, when I ask, when I ask um, customers, what's the, what's the one thing you love the most about Office 365? Um, a lot of them, you know, maybe going into it, they didn't expect Link to be so significant, but it's such a huge uh, win for businesses. You know, it doesn't take a lot to get going. And then once you've got it kind of going, you're, you're able to, you know, the one-click join is even from my phone, right? So you don't have to remember that long uh, passcode to join a conference call, right, where you have, I don't know, but it makes me a more dangerous driver, right? I know I shouldn't be taking those calls, but it's true. So having, you know, the ability to just click once and join a meeting, um, it, it removes friction again, right? It makes it easier. And the other thing I, I just want to add here that it's, it's just really compelling about Link is being able to create meetings and things like that from Outlook. So having that deep Outlook integration where I can take uh, a conversation thread, uh, as an example, reply to that conversation thread with a meeting, and then basically make that meeting a, a link meeting with one click. So you know, really that integration with Outlook, which is a tool we all know and love, um, and having that connection between it, as well as SharePoint and everything else, that connection and integration is also pretty key. But again, you can't beat one click join uh, for a meeting on my whatever mobile device I'm using. You know, I click uh, once, and I don't have to type in that crazy long code anymore. The one last thing that I always love about it is being able to do the desktop sharing. How many times have you said to somebody that's sitting next to you, come over here and look at this, whether you're writing code, you want somebody to proofread an email before you send it out, and you would have they would have to get up out of their seat and come over, look over your shoulder. Now with one click you can share your monitors with somebody else and and it's ready to go for them. Other great one click thing here is being able to share documents that are that are on OneDrive or on SharePoint. With with the click, you can share the documents, enter in your email, enter in the email of the person that you want to share it with. They can come in, they can co-author it with you. Once again, it's just a lot of a lot of easy things that you don't think about much now, but once you start using them, if somebody was to take them away, as Richard said before, with these one one click and being able to start up meetings, if so, if you start using them for a week or two, and then somebody was to take them away, then it's something that you realize that, how did I live without this? It's something else there, um, sorry, just quick point, because I know that this is very topical. Uh, a lot of organizations today have uh, unsanctioned balance sharing. I know you guys see that a lot at Talon. We were talking about this the other day. and. You have all these unsanctioned file sharing. So you have Dropbox, you have uh, maybe it's OneDrive Consumer, right? You have all these alternatives. So people have the ability to share uh, easily externally. 
So we want to make sure that they have that ability um, in your organization. And so Office 365 can be a great way to enable external sharing in a controlled way. Again, there's lots of controls and management. You can see exactly who you've shared with externally. And even the ability to say, uh, get a link and share a link, or to do it with rights management uh, services um, and do it in a protected way where you don't have to worry about losing that file afterwards or um, you know it, it being shared with someone who you didn't intend it to be shared with. So you get you know really robust controls um, and it can really you know when you think of a strategy of if you've got that issue in your organization today of all these unsanctioned uh, file sharing or, or you know just you don't have a preference for those you'd rather have you know a more corporate IT based one than um, SharePoint online blended with you know rights management and the other things that it's got can be a really good solution to that problem because centralization is part of it and then of course protecting the content um, as it gets distributed and that's that's a good point that you brought up Richard I I would say that a lot of I wouldn't say more than half but a lot of the clients that we work with now they they're looking for a file sharing um, mechanism and they do have things like box and they might have um, OneDrive personal they they might have a few different things they might have some file shares and one of the things that a lot of people ask right from the beginning is you know if we if we do just want to do file sharing do you have to do Outlook do you have to do email do you have to do that and with the different SKUs that they have inside of Microsoft Office there's some clients that we've just implemented SharePoint online for them to do file sharing they still wanted to keep their other things on site and so with different the different things that are inside of Office 365 it's with the E3 license you get everything but there are different things that you can if you just wanted to do SharePoint online for file sharing to kind of get your feet wet to get a dip into the cloud and then you know and then you think that that works well then slowly move on to starting to use link then starting to migrate some of your mailboxes it's it's something that doesn't always have to be a a full-on let's jump in feet first the whole way there's different clients that we've worked with that have done a staged approach where their office 365 rollout was you know six six months to a year long where they had planned rollouts of each product and not given everybody everything at once so the the next thing that we we were talking about before is when you when you get Office 365 and you have the Pro Plus, you get the Office, you get five apps, um, five licenses for Office. These are all managed inside of the Office 365 client. So you can go in and download the software and install it on on different machines. And then as you, if you have a machine that you don't use anymore, your, your five licenses are managed inside of your um, profile in Office 365, so you can decommission it on a machine and then use that uh, use that um, license somewhere else. The one other thing that a lot of people like about the new Office 365 is you can run it side by side with older versions of Office. The Office 2013 doesn't overwrite the word 2007 and 2010. And this, this can be really uh, powerful when coupled with what we had listed earlier, which was the ability to not just have them across devices, but be able to uh, give people the, the ability, if they want it, to self-service uh, installs, right? So there's a, there's a couple ways, right? You could distribute this um, and say, look, we've got a bunch of people that want the latest and they need the latest um, so for new machine images, that type of thing. But then there's also the approach of saying, look, hey, for all those people that are, you know, let's say they're Excel superstars, right? And strong uh, power users of Excel. Let's give them the ability to use the latest version of Excel side by side with the previous version. So those issues of macros and upgrades and other things that you may, may or may not run into, you know, they're not going to hold up the rest of the organization from upgrading. And I think that's a big thing, right? So, you know, having a, a small group of apps or applications or solutions in the organization holding up an entire organization, kind of almost holding them hostage from an upgrade, um, you don't have to have that type of challenge with uh, Office 365 and these newer versions of Office. And of course, uh, right around the corner, um, Office 2015 is coming soon, right? So, 
and one of the one of the things that one client that we're working with right now is they they are running them side by side and you know some people that they would normally have to send to training and show them how to use the new version of Word or the new version of Excel they're kind of trying it out themselves and now as they've as they've started to move these they've been having people asking hey can you can you remove the old one from my thing now I don't use it anymore so it's it's something that if there's somebody that's a little bit curious they can also start using it and but they also have the old one to fall back on if they if they get into a, a place where they don't want to be the next part here is the the enjoy business continuity continuity is there's a 99.9% .9 financially backed um, service level agreement and what that means is after if it is down for more than that you start to get refunded off of the price that you pay for office 365 there's nothing in there to say that my um, outlook was down for this long and I lost this much business so I'm I'm entitled to an extra five thousand dollars it's just financially backed SLA and then it starts to cut down on the price that that you pay for it now I want to get into a little bit more about the integrated social networking as Richard was speaking about before is inset with the new office 365 you can you can be able to edit documents and then over on the right hand side have your Yammer conversations going and this is something that is really powerful if you're working on it with somebody you can have a conversation going with them and see different edits and different things that are going on and really be able to collaborate and not have to jump out of PowerPoint online and then go to Yammer to see oh you know somebody said this about that or somebody said that you don't have that kind of jumping of screens back and forth everything is tightly integrated and it's all in one place and this is something new that's coming out with um, office web apps and this is I'm not sure how far it's rolled out to all of the clients I think it's coming in all of the new tenants and it's slowly going out to to the um, the people that have it yeah, so it's, it's been released, uh, and so this this brings up something we haven't really talked about, which is the release cadence. So, um, as updates are released into Optix Five, um, you know most updates actually just are naturally released. So uh, you may notice if you've been on Office 365, uh, let's say for Link, we added a little calendar option inside of Link, and the reason for this is because when people are in Link all the time, uh, you know they're not always in Outlook, and so you know, to go to my calendar to join another meeting uh, seems like miss, you know, at miss clicks, right? I have to take some extra steps. So we added that. It, there was no, there's no risk in adding that feature, um, you know, through a thorough testing, and we provided basically a new feature that improves the experience for our users. So those types of things sometimes will kind of go through, and there's quite a few that we don't, um, you know, announce or make a big hubbub about because it's, it's just, you know, features that should be there. Um, in the social networking, this was a significant feature because it's it's part of many um, deeper integration scenarios that we have planned for Yammer. And so this has been rolled out, but what's happening is because we have so many tenants, we roll it out um, over time to all the existing tenants. So the tenants that have, you can actually say, I want access earlier to stuff. You can kind of check that box. They'll get these types of things sooner sort of a preview uh, option if you want to kind of be in the pre-release. Um, and the other nice thing with most of these features is you can turn them off or turn them on too. So as features are released, um, you know, you can say, well, I'm going to disable this, right, because I'm not ready to roll it out yet within my organization. So um, keep in mind uh, the flexibility of control, but absolutely this is uh, really powerful because to your point, you know, going to social is really Im Im impactful in the business. But sometimes not everyone is is you know happy to go to play on Yammer and use Yammer. That's not that's not their mo, right? They prefer to work in Outlook. They prefer to work in SharePoint or on my desktop. And so bringing uh, Yammer into the Outlook experience, bringing Yammer into the Office experience, which is what we're showing here with Office Online, it's basically bringing all this power of social. Um, and enabling new people to have these social conversations and take part where they probably wouldn't before, right? They're not the type that would go to that social network. So we're really, it's not, it's more than just blending because we're 
increasing um, the number of uh, potential people that can contribute in meaningful ways um, to the social conversations, and especially when you take something like documents, right? What a great um, context point for a social conversation. Hey, this is not current. There's a newer one. Those types of things that are hard for people. Maybe they don't even have the edit rights on the document to be able to update those types of things. So it can be really powerful. The next new feature is something called groups within within Office 365. And this is one thing that, that I've found useful in just in my my work here at Talon is we I have my cloud practice in all of the people that that work for me. So what we have is we have a cloud practice group where everybody can share their ideas, they can you can, and then with ease, as we said before, with the simple click of a button, you can schedule meetings with the entire group. You can share things with the entire group. You can have a have shared inboxes and calendars for the group. So if you if you wanted to look at your calendar opposed to the group calendar, it's just inside of Office 365 on the web with the groups. You can do it just as you would inside of. Um, inside of Outlook and pulling up multiple calendars at once. And groups are something that are, they're great. The other thing that is really neat about this is it's all controlled with all of your Active Directory. So you can, if, if you have a group that has, you know, 10 people in it and one person leaves the company, there's nothing that you have to do to go and get rid of that comp that person from your group. Once they're, they're gone and removed from Active Directory in the company, then they're removed from everything inside of Office 365 and all of, um, all of everything. So the security, I won't say it's, it's, um, it's self-service or built in, but it's, it's controlled by the, the people that really need to do the security. And if you were the owner of the group and wanted to, you know, remove somebody or add somebody, you have, you have full permission to do that. And the last part here, I'll start it out and let Richard finish it up. But with Office 365, they now have, um, they now have video. And with video, you can, what we've seen some of the people using the video for is going in and uploading a lot of HR type of content where people might need be new hires and need to go through some HR um, sensitivity training, uh, sexual harassment training, all of the all of the normal things that you have to do that is is something that's very important and a lot of them are done with videos. We've been at some clients that have had them on VHS tapes and taken these videos and turned them into digital media and you're able to view them through Office 365. The one good thing about it is you can see it on any sort of device. You can see it on your laptop. You can see it on your phone. You can see it on your um, on your tablet. And one of the things is it'll detect what device that you're on and optimize the video for that device. So it's it's something that out of the box at first you say, yeah, I probably had never used that video to upload something. But as people start to um, look at more and more things that they do from day to day over and over and over again, such as like training type of videos, and you can do all of this in, I don't want to say it's free because it it um, it costs the price of Office 365, but when you buy Office 365, this is something that you get out of the box. And it's a very, very powerful tool that um, is available to you. Do you have anything right. to add for video? Yeah, I, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? So this this is an example. We talked about new collaboration experiences, you know, bit, being able to work better together in new ways. And so there is there is the core of being able to co ed like we're gonna see some demos and some of that, but there's the core of being able to use Office and you know SharePoint and those types of things. And then this is something that in a lot of organizations it makes a big difference. So you take this link meeting, right? Now that everyone can do link conferences and link meetings, uh, you can record a link meeting. It's very easy, it's one click. And when you record the link meeting, what do you do with that now, right? Do you want to share it? Sure. Where do we share it? And so the question keeps coming up as more and more video assets are created um, through 
ease of access to tools because it, the need already exists. It's just people may not have the option, right? You know, not everyone had a tool like Camtasia or whatever installed that allowed them to do, you know, effective screen capturing. But now with Link, you can do that, right? It's very, very easy to start to capture content like that. And so as people capture content, we want to be able to enable them to share it and communicate and collaborate on that content. So it's, you know, putting the content up here is one thing, but then adding in Yammer to it, adding in, you know, the ability to have conversations around uh, media that's that's uploaded, um, those types of things, rate, you know, share, discover it, those things can be really, really powerful. So this is a powerful option. Uh, we do the encoding, we do the um, distribution, um, depending on what type of device you're looking at, your bandwidth, all that, we calculate all that for you. So you think of like the Netflix and the consumer world, um, we basically took a lot of the same technology since Netflix runs a lot of Microsoft technology. We've taken those types of technologies and introduced them in the enterprise and said, look, you can do this for free, right, um, on your own, in your own way. And this is this is something that is is another example of when Microsoft is is using their own tools. This is all backed by Azure Media Services. So if, if anybody is familiar with Azure Media Services, that's that's how all the this is backed is it's it's backed with that. And one of the things that a lot of people don't know about Azure Media Services is last year's or um, the last Winter Olympics it was on when it was all streamed through um, I think NBC Sports, it was all streamed using Azure Media Services. And when when the Olympics came to Microsoft and Google and um, Amazon and said, you know, we want to stream the Olympic Games, Google and Amazon told them that they were crazy. And Microsoft said, all right, you know, we'll take a shot at it. And it went off, it went off very, very well. And I don't think that it got the media attention it, it needed because I don't think that everybody thought that it was going to go as well as it did. But it, at one point, I, I'll probably get the, the number wrong here, but in order to stream some of the Olympics, like the magnitude of what, what these types of things can handle, Microsoft had, I think, 300,000 servers um, working to stream the Olympic hop, the final Olympic hockey game, hockey game. And so that's... That's the the type of horsepower that's behind something like this. So the last thing is you always want to you always want to get more of, out of your investment and and you know how I've heard how good it is and you know but can I afford it and let's see what it will do to give you your best bang for your buck is. The one thing that I always say to people is that Office 365, it, it always makes good business sense. It's the latest technology. You're always on the latest version of Office. You don't have to worry about um, service packs and this, that, and the other thing. You, you have all of it up there. Low upfront costs. It's licensed per user. And depending on how you have your license from month to month, you can pay month to month for licenses. And if you have, you know, 100 users, today and 300 users in six months, then you pay for the 100 users today, and then you pay for the 300 more users when they come on. And and as I said, it's it's low upfront costs. You don't have to uh, worry about buying all the infrastructure to support this. The, the one other thing that a lot of people start to see is as they get rid of the infrastructure that, that hosts this, they don't the people that manage the infrastructure, a lot of people say, oh, well, they'll be out of a job, and, and they're not out of a job. They're, they're really just doing a different job now, or doing, um, they're not managing the hardware, they're not managing um, putting servers in racks, they're managing the users, and they're able to service the users and get the end users the support that they need rather than wor having to worry about if something came unplugged from a rack or if the rack is loose or falling down it's all it's software as a service it's ready to go and ready for you to use I am going to jump into a couple of demos now the first thing that I'm going to do here is go in and share my monitor so so the first thing that I want to show is is just the whole the whole link interface and And we have your list of favorite users of everybody here, and and I'm gonna 
I'm going to go through a, a quick little thing of being able to to start a conversation and the different pieces that you can use inside of Link. So just by double clicking on somebody. So with that, you can easily start a start a, a chat with somebody. The other thing with one click, you can call on a link phone. And if I wasn't on this meeting now, I'd be able to call in and, and speak to Celia. You can start video sharing. I don't want to scare you with my picture. The other thing you can do is do desktop sharing, do um, sharing of presentable content. You can have one notes. You can have attachments inside of a of a meeting. If we wanted to go and add somebody in, you can add, invite more people to, to a um, thing. All of this is with, with a click of a button. So, so that's some of the, the features around Link. The next thing that I'm going to pull up now is co-authoring of a document. And this is something that with, um, Office 365, OneDrive for Business. I have all of my all of my documents that I use on a day-to-day -day basis in here. I have in Office 365 um, folder. This is the web interface to it. There's a, a button here that says Sync, where you can sync this with your desktop version. So if I click Sync, I'm going to sync it with my desktop version. And then you'll see inside of inside of File Explorer, I have a OneDrive for Business Talon. And if you look here, all of these folders are the same folders that are on the web interface. And the red and green lights are whether or not they've synced. So there's a, I think that there's a file in here, or there's files inside of this Talon folder that haven't synced all the way up to the web yet. So being able to go and co-author something, if I wanted to, Celia has a document open now, and I will open it here from OneDrive. You can open it up in Word Online, and you can, you can look at it, view it in Word Online. You can click a button to edit it in real full-blown Word, or I can edit it in Word Online. So I'm going to edit it in Word Online just to go through and show some of the the features and this is a this is a document if if Celia and I were working together to put together a statement of work you can see over in here that as she starts to edit it there will be different pop-up things that that says that she's also editing the document and so as I come in here And the one thing about Word Online is everybody always asks, is where is the save button? And there's no save button for when you're editing in Word Online. Is as you're typing, it's all being saved, and so you don't have to save it. You don't have to worry about um, a document being saved. And then you can see as somebody starts to type, there's a there's an indicator that that they're starting to edit at a certain point, and as she edits it, you'll be able to see what she's typing. And then the last, the last piece that I'm going to to go into is the the full-on Office 365 portal. and show you how how we have the use of groups is this is the office 365 portal and in here you can see that you have outlook you have calendars people news feeds onedrive um, sharepoint online the different uh, the different office suites so the for in one um, onedrive for business i have my cloud practice group here and as I said, go, setting up the groups is a great way to do collaboration. It, 
it will it'll set up uh, file shares for you. You can see. Oops, as I click the. So we have the cloud practice group. You can see the conversations that are going on. You can subscribe and unsubscribe to different groups. As I said before, you can see the calendar functions of the of the cloud practice. If I want to add my calendar side by side, or not side by side, but my calendar will come in a different color. I can add different people's calendars in here to see if I do want to set up a meeting for the group, I can see everybody else's calendars and it, it gives you a one-stop shop for, for the collaboration. So we're just about at the end of time here, so I'll wrap up my my uh, demos. And bring it back to the slide deck. So the the next steps here is one of the things that Microsoft is offering right now is a fast track program, and it's included as part of the service. And what it is is depending on the different license uh, types that you buy, and it's available for any customers that have 150 seats or more. That Microsoft will will get you started on moving to Office 365. They'll uh, go through and set up the set up single sign-on for you with and get. Oops, so, go ahead, so no worries. So the so fast track. What we found was, uh, you know, earlier you made a great comment, which was you can kind of take this at your own pace, right? So maybe I want to roll out um, SharePoint. Uh, you know, OneDrive for Business is a very very uh, a uh, frequent one where people roll that out first, right? With unlimited storage, terabyte right now, going to unlimited. That's like, you can't beat that, right? So if you think about that, it's like, okay, let's roll out OneDrive for Business, then we'll roll out this, then we'll roll out that, and you come up with, you know, six-month plan or maybe even a year plan um, to transition your business over. Some companies, they want to get started fast, um, quite literally weeks, uh, days, right? And you can do that with Office 365. So you can actually get on Office 365 very, very quickly if it's if it's important to you or if you you know you want to move specific workloads. Of course, certain things like SharePoint migrations could take a little bit longer if you've got existing uh, legacy deployments. So when you think of your transition, what we've found is many of our customers needed help. And it's only fair that if we're going to offer a service like Office 365 that Microsoft supports and provides um, some benefit to customers to help them with that onboarding process, help them get started, as you said. Um, and so that's really what that program is about. And we have like a concierge resource um, based on 150 seats and above that actually will contact you. Um, and they'll, they'll give you an idea of here's all of the steps you need to do. They'll give you scripts. They'll give you solutions like that that say this is what you need to accomplish. Um, but then, you know, a lot of times customers have needs beyond, you know, just the getting started in basics. And that's exactly where, you know, uh, experts like Talon come in. So if you look at the adoption offer, what we did is we set aside money. Now, this is important because this is a time box. Uh, it actually expires, at, uh, I believe it's, um, I'll double check the timing, but I think it's started in September, I think it expires in March. So this is a great opportunity for now. If you're, if you're on the fence or you haven't looked at Office 365, um, buying it now means that you can get um, some additional funding, again, based on the size of your seats and stuff, that Microsoft will actually pay the partner, in this case, a partner like Talon, to help you with, um, you know, the uh, migration of SharePoint, as an example, into the cloud, or, um, you know, driving uh, a successful implementation of Link and that sort of thing. So there's a lot that you can kind of do there um, in the adoption offer, but that's kind of the difference between them. One is a time-boxed uh, funding offer, which is the adoption offer, and FastTrack is just a service um, to really help uh, accelerate that onboarding. And then the the next steps, as I said, you can go in and on the Office 365, you can set up a free trial. And if you have any questions at all, you, you can count on somebody like us to help you begin and plan your implementation because a lot of people, a lot of people that we talk to are almost afraid of this. They, they say it's so much, it's, it's 
all kinds of things, you know, I don't even know where to start. That's something that we can we can help you out with. One of the other things that we have that is inside of um, Office 365 that we didn't get into is um, Power BI for business intelligence. And one of the things that we offer at Talon is a free um, business analytics proof of concepts with your data. It's a it's a canned offer that we have that a lot of people say, oh, that that's great, but that Contoso or the the canned uh, demo that you have, that's that really doesn't fit a retail or it doesn't fit a law firm or it doesn't fit a government agency. You know, we can put something together um, to do a proof of concept with your data inside of Office 365 with the Power BI.